There she is in all her glory. We're going to be talking about that dreaded word, Christmas. Do you know, everybody that I meet seems to fall into two distinct categories. Oh, by the way, just remind you that I'm joined by my good <laughs> friend, Rachel Davidson here. Um, before we start, just to let you know, both of us are international best-selling authors. Um, the point of me is Rachel's book. Mm -hmm. I've got a number of books and the latest one, Thriving Not Surviving. You'll find a free digital download on the website, which is genuinely uucom it's an award-winning book, isn't it? It yeah. is now, yes. yes. Congratulations, Gina. I've won my category. Um, you did. Which is really great news. Book Talk Radio. Yeah, well done. <laughs> One of the things that I'd like to talk to you about, so the theme of today, is Christmas. Hmm. Now, people I meet seem to fall into two very distinct categories. And there doesn't seem to be much in the middle. Those who love Christmas and those who I see as humbuggers. Yeah who think that the meaning of Christmas is gone, that Christmas is overrated, that they hate the thought of it, and are really pleased when it's over. And it just strikes me that, you know, for those people who have a, a, a religious belief around Christmas, um, it's a very, very special day. Yeah. But most people have taken on board that, that Christmas is a time, even if they're not religious or not, Christian religious, yes. that Christmas is a, um, an opportunity to celebrate. Yes. Now, I think it has its origin going back into pagan times, mm -hmm. yeah. that um, in the Northern Hemisphere it was very dark, um, mm -hmm. it was a time to eat up the meat that was going um, mm -hmm. off, mm -hmm. you couldn't support the animals beyond Christmas, so mm -hmm. lots were slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And it was a way of lightening those dark, dark days until the solstice hit, and gradually you could see that the days started yes. to lengthen. Yes. So if you think about it, there's great symbolism there, isn't there? Out of the darkness comes light. Yep. And I think for those people who find Christmas a strain, it's expensive, they feel the meaning of Christmas has disappeared, my challenge, I suppose, to them is, that's down to you. So which category do you put yourself in, Gina? I enjoy Christmas. You're in the enjoy camp. But I enjoy Christmas. I recognise that it's become very commercialised. Yes. I recognise that for many people, it's a time of huge strain. Mm. Particularly if you've got children, their lists grow. <laughs> um, and most of them have got a pretty hefty price to put to it. Mm -hmm. And I know from those days when I was a head teacher, how many parents worried all year about how they were going to manage Christmas mm -hmm. and how they were going to pay for Christmas since mm -hmm. they would pay for the following year right the way up to Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons that I wrote um, and created the series, The 12 Days of the Holiday, yeah. um, to help people perhaps think differently yes. about Christmas. Yes. And for me, Christmas is an opportunity to reconnect with people that perhaps I don't see or hear from. Yes. Who, if we didn't connect to Christmas, uh, and that's down to me thinking about it, um, it would be very easy for us to lose, just, just uh, lose yeah. um, contact. It's an opportunity to think about other people. Yes. Um, and to do something for others. And again, I'd like to think that you do it all the year round, but I think it's particularly poignant at Christmas to be able to yes. think about other people. Yes. Um, I love having my family around me. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy um, thinking about people and, and um, sorting out something that I think that they would like, and whether that's something to eat or it, you know it, it's a little present or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so yes, I really enjoy it. However, mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot to be said for planning ahead, for making sure that it's not all done last minute when it, it then becomes a real trial. Yes. Um, and I know that there are people who probably laugh at me in the sense that I, I don't buy Christmas presents only at Christmas. I start looking in January. So I think that is a very grown up, mature <laughs> approach to Christmas. And I know that, um, that I get laughed at by a few people because I'm also the same. That if I spot something that I think, oh, so and so like that, yeah, I don't, I don't sit and wait because it's June 
when yeah. I spot it, I don't think, oh, all right. I buy it then and there because then I don't have to think so much well, in that cr- crunched period in Christmas where you're thinking, I've got to get all the presents. <laughs> it does two things. One is it spreads the cost. Yeah. And the other is that, you know, just before Christmas, um, when there's lots of other things to do, the danger is that you can't then um, think of what they want. So I listen yeah. out, and if I hear people say something, then yes. I don't always manage it right, but, but I, no. I like to think that, you know, no. I'll buy something that they will like rather than something that necessarily I like. Yes. Um, and I think it's not just about the presents. For me, the preparation starts, I send a lot of Christmas cards. It's my way of keeping in touch with people that I know a lot. Mm. I buy my Christmas cards in the January sales. <laughs> um, and so I can buy nice cards, yeah. but it doesn't break the bank. Yeah. yeah. Um, I buy when I buy stamps during the year. I buy an extra book of stamps, mm-hmm. and I put them to one side for Christmas. So we haven't got that. Oh my God! I've got to get to the post office. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, you know, creating labels on computers. So once you've got your address label set up. That saves a huge amount of time, of course, yes. if you've got a computer. Yes, yes. But even if you haven't got a computer, um, if you um, write them out and photocopy them, mm. there's another way of doing it, and then cut them up and then mm. just stick them with a bit of, of, of um, a print stick, mm. um, can save you a lot of time mm. over the years. Yes. But I think before we sort of go into the, the making Christmas easy, mm-hmm. just think about the Christmas story yeah giving a gift yes and sometimes it's not about the present it's about the gift of time you know going to see somebody who perhaps wouldn't um, have a visit otherwise Mm. it's about you know making an effort Mm. um, without having to be you know a martyr to it Mm, but actually doing it in a way that that supports both the other person and that you can feel good yes. about you. Yes. I mean, I wonder how many people who are listening out here uh, to this have people within their life that there's been an argument or there's been a rift. Mm-hmm. And whilst, you know, 365 days of the year, 366 days in a leap year, mm-hmm. there is an opportunity to um, offer an olive branch. Mm-hmm. Then to me, it seems that if you haven't done it, throughout the year, Christmas gives you a perfect opportunity to say, do you know what, life's too short, you know, how about we bury the hatchet? We don't have to agree, Mm -hmm. but we do, you know, I care about you, Mm -hmm. Um, and even if I don't believe the same things as you, or I don't like the way, Mm -hmm. um, you know, things have panned out, I'd like you in my life, Mm -hmm. even if it's on a very, controlled basis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm reminded you my brother suddenly dropped dead at the mm-hmm. moment, you know that yes. um, he was cycling yes. doing, going to uh, do his last um, rehearsal for the London to Brighton cycle rows. And one of the things that taught me was life is very, very short. You never know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I was um, I know somebody who works in a hospice and they say how many times people wait till someone's on their deathbed yes. before they then heal the rift and heal the wounds. Yes. And it seems to be such a waste to wait until then. So I am somebody who has a, a, a rift in, in, um, with a family member mm-hmm. and who hears all of, you know, yeah. excellent, excellent um, perspectives yeah. on how Christmas can be a time of healing, can be a, a time yeah. coming together of forgiveness, um, you know, yeah. peace to all men and all that, you know, all, all of these. Um, and and I, I apply that to my own personal situation and don't feel able to. So, now, there's a lot of context behind this, so, yeah. so but to, to keep it brief, the, the context is that I have tried olive branches and, yes. and they have um, not, not been accepted. So for me, I, I do feel, um, a guilt pressure of of being um, separate from my sister in this way, and it does occur to me that this is the time of year where you know I could try again to do the olive branch and so forth. But I find that 
it, at this particular point in my life, for, for lots of very mm. complex, you know, and we're talking like decades worth mm. of stuff, um, that giving myself another guilt trip over it just because of the time of year begins to make me feel bad about yeah. the season. I'm going to stop you because this is yeah. not about the guilt trip. No. Okay. <laughs> Anything but. And the yeah. other thing is, this: the only person we have control over is us. Yes. Okay. There's a rift. And my advice would be, the first thing is, if you forgive the other person for their part, and you forgive yourself for your part, in some ways, the rift does not have to be mended by falling upon each other's shoulders and, no. isn't it wonderful? No. But I think if you were able to um, work on the letting go of the hurt that that rift has created at an energetic level, just send your sister love. Yes. That you, the healing of it can be at a personal level, you know, where you give somebody a hug and say, oh, Let's go on together, but sometimes that's not possible. Mm. But forgiving, remember, mm. forgiveness is not about condoning mm. or forgetting, mm. um, but it is about just letting go yeah. of the power of that hurt. I, I totally to agree. I think I think the point is that I begin to feel more of the guilt because of the season of you know, and, and you, know, you see the Christmas movies. True. Yeah, you see them with the. Uh, um, I was watching Christmas with the Coopers, which is a great movie if anybody wants to watch a dysfunctional family yeah. and, and see the truth of how some yeah. families behave. But even that film had like this Disney-fied happy ending. Yeah. And so there is this general um, season, and I think this is why a lot of people start to get a bit bar humbug, yeah. because you get a lot of external pressure for life should be perfect, you should have a perfect family, decent or should, I'm saying. Yes. This is the messages that, that are out there. Well, that's the meaning that people take from it. Yes. And I think it's an interesting one and a very powerful message that I'd like to get across. Yes. That this is not about you should do this, you should do that, you should mm. do the other. And in many ways, when you write or talk about healing the world, whether that's in person or at an uh, for those of you who are not familiar with sending an intention, mm. I call that an energetic um, act. Yeah. But if you set the intention that you forgive the hurt for whatever it is, and that you send that person love, mm -hmm. even though you don't agree with what they've done, but ultimately that you value that person for who they are and you send them love. Mm. But probably as important, if not more important, is to forgive yourself oh. and to take the learning. And the learning may very well be that the two of you are never going to um, be able to um, have a, a, a close relationship, a close one, as you did in the past. And I think that's part of the hurt, is that you were once very close. Oh. And that oh. I would suspect, although I don't know, that there is a sense of being betrayed, a sense of being rejected. They're very, very powerful emotions. Yes. And in letting go of the rejection, in letting go of the, of the betrayal, the sister's doing what she can, the best she can with what resources that she has. Yeah. Now, I would suggest to you, and I know some of the backstory, that she's not had your opportunity to grow, or at least if it's been presented to her, she's not taken the opportunity. Mm. You have grown, and you have grown emotionally and spiritually into somebody who is far beyond her capacity. Mm -hmm. That's part of the problem for her, yeah. in that you've not stayed the same yet. And I suspect that she feels equally betrayed and equally rejected. Yeah. Because it's as if you're speaking Swahili mm. and she's speaking French. Mm. Mm. So part of the problem is there is no, the opportunity to communicate, yes, you use words, mm. but the words are perceived in very different ways. Yes. And so the rift gets bigger. Yes. Now, if you send forgiveness and you send the intention of the love, mm -hmm. It's been my experience that that starts to shift things. Yes. Now, it's not instantaneous. You know, I say I love you. It's got to be heartfelt. 
Yeah. It's got to be made and consistent. Yeah. And I think um, when, when I begin to feel those shoulds crawling up on my yeah. shoulders, uh, I remind myself uh, that, you know, this peace amongst all men, it does apply to me too. I am allowed a sense of peace. And I also try to remind myself that Christmas is actually just another day. It is just one. It and of course, depending on where day, you live, yeah. people celebrate it on different days. Yes, exactly. So, so uh, here in the UK, the tradition is, generally speaking, to have most of the activity on Christmas Day itself. Yeah. But I know in Europe, there is a tradition to do more, much more activity on and, Kingstone, um, fifth or sixth of January. Yeah, and Christmas Eve as well yes. is one. So, so actually, when you sort of put that all into the mix, it's Christmas is really about what you decide you're going to make, yeah. and that's particularly relevant to me also now that um, you know, my my family is is uh, my marriage broke down, and so my children now have two Christmases, one with me yes. and one with their father, and that was quite difficult to transition into that sense of we're not going to have that in inverted commas perfect Christmas morning mm -hmm. because there is a great point at which the yeah. children leave and go elsewhere. And I had a lot of people asking me the first year where, where I lived that, how are you feeling? How do you feel? You know, and again, the, the sort of the pressure, external pressure, uh, internal pressure as well, because obviously I was aware of, mm, this is going to feel different, of, should I be more upset about this? Or should I be doing something different about this? And, and that sort of sense of how, how do I make it perfect? I'd like to just spend a few minutes redefining perfect. Yeah. Because yeah. one person's perfect is another person's hell. Yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> So perfect is what's right in that time. Yeah. And ideally a situation where it's win-win for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Rather than in order for me to have perfect, you've got to have hell. Yes. And so all of us, we are in, in effect in life muddling along, making the best of, of what we can. Yeah. I mean, you might argue I'm single, I have no children of my own. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you look at the perfect Christmas as mm -hmm. it is on Disney, mm -hmm. um, I should be married with 2.4 children and a Labrador or a retriever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but actually, I choose, and it is an active choice. Mm -hmm to make the best that I can yeah. within the circumstances that I have. Yes. Now, if I was on my own for Christmas, I would go and help at a crisis shelter. Yeah. I would yeah. go and do something with other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know friends who've done that and have had the best day ever mm. because they have been helpful. Mm. They've been with other people who are determined to make the few days of Christmas as good as they can for mm -hmm. those people who, for whatever reason, have been out on the streets. Yeah. Um, I would find a way of connecting with people. Yes. Now, you may be somebody who preferred would think my ideal Christmas would be a TV um, dinner uh, and to watch completely on yes. my own yes. TV all day. Never get out of bed. Maybe that. And if that's <laughs> your perfect Christmas, that's great. Mm. But what we do is we set ourselves up for failure. Yes. Whatever we've got, we say, well, no, 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 that's not good enough. What yes. I need is this. Yes. And I must have all the family rounds. They must all get on with one another. Yeah. I will trip around from the kitchen where I'm slaving over creating a massive feast, but yeah. I will wear full makeup and a very elegant dress. Yes. And I shall, I shall walk around like some 1950s housewife. I know that there are definitely people out there who think that's a perfect Christmas. <laughs> and as I, in one of the, going back to the 12 days of Christmas, I would, the, the advice is get prepared. I do mm. my potatoes, my roast potatoes, my roast parsnips, they're done ahead of time yeah. um, and they're in the freezer. Yeah. You know, I get as well prepared as I can. Yeah. The other thing is don't be a victim. Yes. Ask people, yes. here you are, you do the sprouts. You can actually have a really great time if everybody's involved. Yeah, because I mean, you know what, it's fine. If you really want to work yourself like that on the day, and then, that's your definition, and you get to the end of that day and you think, I am really, really exhausted, but I have loved every moment, then that is go totally for it. Do it. Absolutely. <laughs> but what happens is that you have somebody so often slaving over the stove, being expected to do everything, and resenting it, yeah, every minute. Yeah, beginning to feel like put upon. When's my Christmas going to happen? Puffing yeah. and puffing, yeah. but not actually saying, look, 
If you want a Christmas dinner, let's all get together and do it. Yes. Um, yes. And making it convivial. Yes. Um, but making, when you make a huge chore out of it, it becomes a huge chore. Yes. In the same way with presents. You know, I, I know there are many people who are in financial straits. Yes. I mean, the food yes. banks, if you're listening to this in the UK, we've never had more food banks, which I find mm. an awful situation. In if you're listening to society. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's let that go. Um, but if you've got no money mm -hmm. and you've got children who, um, who are mm -hmm. asking for things, it's very, very difficult. Yes. So what I would say is, you can have a lot of fun by actually um, making uh, a, a very small uh, financial limit. Yes. So I have some friends and we, the, the, the limit is five pounds, which yes. is about seven, uh, on today's uh, rate, about seven dollars. Yeah. And you can use that for materials or ingredients. Right. Or you can use it to buy something. Yes. Um, not allowed to spend any more, but you, the idea is to be as creative as you can. You know, it's rumoured that the royal family have something very similar. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because it's not about how big the box is or uh, how shiny. Yeah. Most children's toys, you know, a week on, are going to be consigned to the cupboard and not used again. Yes, yes. Get the kids making presents. Mm. You know, simple things. It doesn't have to be hard. They can make some, some simple sweeties mm. for for people and the ingredients are you know, pretty cheap, icing sugar and a bit of, of food oh, colouring and, oh and so on. Um, or that you choose to, no presents, but we're going to have an outing. Mm -hmm. And the outing doesn't have to cost a lot of money. No. But we're going to go and do something as a family. Yes. The, the more you put yourself under pressure in order to compete with the Joneses, mm -hmm. the more you're going to feel as if you're on that treadmill. I totally agree. And I mean, the older you get, um, the the less and less it is about what you're going to get. Yes. And um, I'm totally I'm totally fine with the fact that as I've got older, the amount of presents I I receive has dwindled and dwindled. Yes. <laughs> um, I have the opposite issue actually with my children in that my son is it's like getting a blood out of a stone for him to give me a Christmas list. So you see, isn't that interesting? Because if you go back. Mm -hmm. There was no such thing as a Christmas list. Yeah. It was a surprise at Christmas. Yes, and sometimes the surprise <laughs> was great. I can remember you know, having, uh, you know, getting this amazing doll that my mum had made clothes for. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it was things, and you thought, "Oh dear!" <laughs> but that was part of growing up. This yes. business of I've got a list and I want everything on my list. Yes. It's a relatively new phenomenon. I agree, actually. I mean, you know, I was growing up in the seventies, and. Um, uh, and I, I guess it's, you know, paper catalogues would come out filled with toys and yeah. like, me and my sister would pour over it for yes. months and be like preparing our Christmas yes. this and all the excitement of this and stuff. And I remember that very clearly. Um, so, so actually there's a little bit of transference going on. So when I say to my children, have you created Christmas? I mean, you'd write your letter to Santa. Yeah, and I, I, I'm slightly hoping that they've still got that sort of magical view of it. But, um, but actually, if I boil it right down with my son, it's like... I know that if I get him the wrong computer game, then my name is Mud. <laughs> and so I'm trying to mitigate something yeah. that, that and, and again, you see, then I have to sort of say to myself, hang on a minute, is that what, is that what Christmas is about? Is it? Mm. So, I mean, he hasn't given me a Christmas list this year, and I have explained to him that um, I, I don't want to take the risk of buying him the wrong computer game that isn't compatible with this, or he's already got, or, you know, and it, uh, this is a subject that is beyond my ken being middle-aged and, and female, computer games are not, not where I'm at. So I'm not risking spending expensive money yes. on, on stuff that he's just going to go and, and hate. So I have said to him, look, if you don't give me a Christmas list and sort of guide me towards what you want, then I think you're just going to have to get money. And that's a bit sad, but if that's what you really want, mm -hmm. um, can you just bear in mind that your sister will be opening lots of presents mm -hmm. and you'll be opening an envelope? Mm -hmm. just, just think about it. How do you feel about that? But actually, part of my oh, I'm not going to get too too uppity about Christmas mm. is having to let go of that again perfect vision of him sitting amongst a pile of presents and opening them with joy on his face. We create <laughs> this fantasy, and the fantasy is that it has to be a particular way. Yeah, 
Yeah. And actually, life is a <laughs> You know, I would suggest to people, relax a bit. Yeah. You know, give yourself a break. Mm. And, you know, if it isn't all there, if it is, you know, you'll still, the day will start and the day will finish yeah. um, in 24 hours. Mm. Um, and you'll move on. And, and in England, it would be Boxing Day. In many parts of the world, people will go back to work the next day. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is about what you choose to make of it. Yes. One of the lovely things, I think, when you have children is to create some traditions. Yes. That you know, Christmas becomes synonymous with. Yes. Um, but if you're making those traditions, remember that they're not cast in stone. Yeah. If circumstances change, change the tradition yeah when i was a head teacher i used to tell this story every christmas mm -hmm. and the parents used to uh, come and, and uh, thank me for the story but it's actually a true story mm -hmm. although my sister and i've got very different memories of it uh. my memory of it is my brother was tiny mm -hmm. um, a babe in arms and my mum was a, a dressmaker and we would always have a new outfit on the back of our door on christmas morning she would have made it um you know they didn't, my parents didn't have much money. Um, anyway, my sister and I woke up. Um, I think she woke me up, but that's not her story. Um, <laughs> it was pitch dark. Um, so we got dressed in our new outfits. We went and picked my brother up, and we went to see Mr. and Mrs. Baines, who lived across the road. Knocked on the door. It was all dark, but we knocked on the door, and eventually they came to the door and said, what are you doing? It's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and we were marched back to my house and um, they woke my parents up and handed okay. us back. Thereafter, Christmas presents were not on the end of the bed. Um, they were under the tree. Yeah. The lounge door was firmly closed. <laughs> yeah. And we were not allowed in the lounge until my parents got up and we'd have breakfast. That's, that's mine. Yes, those are my traditions. So the parents loved it. I mean, we had a little stocking. <laughs> You know, yes. with the traditional um, satsuma yes. and, and, yes. uh, and so on. It's cold, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. been there all together. <laughs> yeah. um, but that tradition came out of necessity now. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can make traditions, but yeah. they don't have to cost you a lot of money. No. Um, one of my uh, friends in the village, she has a lovely idea. She sets a treasure hunt on Christmas Day. Oh. She goes to... Uh, sometimes to the local ward, sometimes to the park, and she sets clues. Ah. So they get up in the morning and they have breakfast. They, whatever the weather, they go out. Right. And they she has four children. They're now into their twenties and thirties. Right. They still insist on ah. having a, a treasure hunt. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she takes a picnic. What? They don't have Christmas dinner. Do they not? No. Wow. They take a, a, a picnic and they're out for several hours doing that, and they come back. Um, and then they just settle down, and by that time the children were exhausted. Oh, now, yeah. as adults, they're exhausted. Yeah. Um, and they've spent the time being together, laughing together, and it's mm. taken a bit of thought. And if you win a clue, there's a tiny little oh. uh, prize. It might be a packet of sweets or something oh, like that. Oh. But their Christmas day is full of activity. Well, doesn't that prove to to or us all? That this, this, you know, the Christmas that we see on the telly and in yeah. the films is a tiny, tiny slice of what reality actually yes. is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've got some coffee. So, um, it, thank you for joining us, those of you that are, are, are joining us. Love to know what sort of Christmas mm -hmm. you have. What are your traditions? What are the challenges that you face when you're yeah. thinking about Christmas and how do you overcome them? Yeah. Because I think when we share the ways in which we <laughs> overcome these things, we can make Christmas a little bit easier for everybody. So it's giving permission to, to do Christmas your way when Absolutely. you hear about the other ways that people are doing it. There is no right or wrong way. Yeah. And I think, you know, if we could get away from being perfect mm. um, and start to be genuine. Yes. To to look for ways to give pleasure um, to yourself and to others. Yes. And for me, Christmas is about sharing. Connection. It's about making that connection. Yes. But I would say, you know, it's time to make a connection with yourself. Yeah. You know, to be kind to you, mm. to recognise that 
um, within the whole business of Christmas, there is an opportunity um, to serve everybody else's needs, but without diminishing your own. Yes. And it's about how can you all have a lovely Christmas? Yes. Um, so, you know, think about this next few days and how you can help yourself. Just take the pressure off. Mm. You know, if there's a few less things on the dinner table, you know, nobody's going to notice. I mean, it's a roast dinner with knobs on you. It? <laughs> it certainly is. Um, <laughs> and, you know, if you've got relatives who, when they uh, have a drink uh, or too much of a drink, get to be difficult, mm. well, you know, spike their drink with some mixers. I was going to say, what are the alcohol down before they arrive? <laughs> you know, uh, or, you know, just don't have it in store. <laughs> yeah, oops, oh, I forgot to get it this year. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so wishing you all a very, very Merry Christmas um, and um, take care and we'll look forward to uh, 2019. Thanks very much for joining me. Lovely to see you. Bye now. This is Gina Gardner from Passionate World Radio, your host today.